Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here. I am back at Corey's. It's late. We're cranking out videos. I want to know about bristlenose plecos. I want to know more about plecos in general. Um, I have a little bit of a pleco phobia, which maybe I'll tell you one day, um, but I'm kind of curious as to how you've had so much good success with breeding these guys, Corey. So yeah. why don't you take it away and let's talk about some of these fish. So I think first and foremost, set up an environment they like to be in and they will breed. If you force it, a lot of times they won't breed. So this tank here is just a 40 breeder. Lots of stuff is breeding here. We've got guppies breeding, we've got tons of shrimp, we've got snails, and we've got a bunch of plecos. And so you can see like the smallest babies, like on this leaf back here, that's the latest batch, okay? So you've got that size, and then if we look like maybe down here, we start seeing like, that's probably two or three weeks old at that point. And then if we start looking around, like these guys are probably more at the like six weeks old at that point. And then we've got some really big ones. Like this is a big male right here. And how I know it's a male, it's got a bunch of bristles and they'll go up into its forehead. And so females sometimes will get a little bit of stubble right around their lip line, uh, but never up into the forehead. Oh, I, sh I shouldn't say never, but almost never. Um, and then you've got more generations in the back there. That was probably three or four months old at that point in the back in the bulbitis there. Got him, And, yeah. uh, you know, so this is, I'm calling you breeding them in here, which tip, people typically don't do. They would, like, remove the cave and move the babies and stuff like that. But I've got multiple males and females. And I'm going to get in here in a little bit and show you, like, what's going on. So these fish are actually pretty big. They don't have as big a spawns anymore. Um, but if I kind of turn this guy over here... You know, you get to see, this is an albino bristle nose, by the way. Mm -hmm. And you can see those bristles going up into his, you know, his forehead there. And this is a smaller male. This is not a big one by any means. And then so there's probably a female right over here, if I flip this leaf over. And so you can see on the female, oh, yeah. there's a little bit of stubble, but almost nothing in that forehead region at all. So it's barely like, oh, she's sucking onto me now. But <laughs> you, know, you can tell they're really calm. Like, I don't get in here very often. They don't see me as a threat. And you can see the shrimp crawling all over me, and it actually feels pretty weird. I, I don't think I've ever had them suck on me like this before, so it's kind of <laughs> awesome, and I don't want to move my hand. That'd be freaking me out. <laughs> it, it, it feels weird because I can feel their teeth. They have teeth right on the... Oh, wow. Just climbing up me. Um, that's pretty, this is pretty weird. Yeah. I've never seen them do this Yeah, either. that's crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, but they're really fun to breed. It's one of the first things I ever bred, and uh, they're easy, and my wife loves the Pleco Baby, so that's cool. Um, what you want to be feeding them, I feed them a lot of green beans, uh, rapashi foods, blood worms, like today blood worms and some like micro pellets went in. And I wonder if you just let me get close to the glass, like I just assume she's wow. going to freak out. Like you can see all these shrimp on my hand too. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, you're you part know. of the scape now. That's right. You can't leave. Um, you know, but I, I don't know, I've never had this opportunity to like, you know. So right on their gill plates, kind of the side of their eyes where their pectoral fins, they actually have what's like these gill rakers, mm -hmm. and they're all these spikes, and that's what get caught, gets caught in the net. It's also what they fight with, so they all sidestep, kind of left and right, and gouge other plecos and stuff. They're fighting over food. I think this fish is pooping on me right now. Yeah, it no is. No joke, it that is. fish is pooping. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, anyway, back to Yeah, they fight by going side to side and like gouging the other... Uh, like other placostums out of the way and it can actually make wounds like that. Interesting. And uh, I am like the shrimp king, by the way. You, you are, notice you this? Are, this like, there's insane. a lot happening to you right <laughs> yeah. now, man. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, this is actually pretty cool. But this is going to make for a great thumbnail. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I mean, I already have this on my channel, but um, I wonder if the males would do it too. I don't think so, but I don't, I don't even want to stop. You That's can't pull your hand out of this tank. Yeah, man. like it's, they just got to finish cleaning me. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you can see, you know, the good thing is the adults, they don't prey on any type of other babies, right? So they're not going to eat any of the guppy babies. They don't eat any uh, shrimp babies. I did a whole breeding fish for profit series on how I think people should breed guppies and, uh, and shrimp in the same tank to make a profit. And in a bigger tank like this, you can do um, a bristlenose as well and the snails. So you can really monetize this and sell some of the plants, that type of mm -hmm. thing. And yeah, it's a 40 beer, but it can really crank out some some frying. So that brings up a good point. Like, what's water parameters in here while I just keep doing this because it's awesome? Uh, <laughs> I run about 7.2 pH, but I bred them anywhere from 6.8 all the way to 7.8 or 8. So really wide range of pH. Hardness, I've gone from super duper soft, which I have super duper soft tap water, 
all the way up to about uh, you know 300 parts per million. I've got a lot of crushed coral in this tank at the moment, and if I wasn't doing water changes, it'd be real hard. For temperature, as cold as 72 I've bred them at, and then right here they're about 75, and I've kept them in 82 and bred them as well. And when you really keep them hotter, you really gotta feed them a lot. Their metabolism's racing. And uh, yeah, it's maybe it's done clean on the, the top side. Let's see if I turn my hand over here. If uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, I've just found them to be very adaptable, and I find it easier if you work with the albinos. And that's only because you pretty much know you're gonna get a compatible species. Like, there's a lot of different types of bristle nose. I think there's over 200 types of just bristle nose. And if you were to get like some wild caught or something like that, you could uh, get you know two different species and not know it. They look so similar. So the, the albinos, or buy from someone that you know bred them, and that way you know they're going to be like brother and sister, and that's not an issue. That's like an ET phone home thing right there. You know what? I think, I think cause you were eating onion rings yeah. before this. You must, I did you have must an onion ring, and they onion. love it. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, just, I find them super easy to breed. No, you can't make a ton of money on them anymore, but they are decent money. Like, everyone needs some. And they're the same to breed. I've got long fins in a different tank. I've got super red bristle nose. Um, I've also got the dwarf Claroplecco, which um, is a kind of a dwarf version, but it's harder to breed. Not much harder, but it is harder. Let's see if we can get some more males and more more fish back here that are actually in this tank. Yeah, there's a bunch. In yeah, here. I've got all different generations, and I this is purely colony breeding. I'm not trying to maximize how many I can raise or anything like that. And. Uh, as you can see, I keep them and they're super just laid back because I just I don't mess with them. I'm not in here with a net every other day trying to scoop out shrimp and fish. Let's get this female. Or is it a male? I think it's a male over here. It's a big one. Let's see if I can get him to come out. You want to do the magic trick that I've never done before? <laughs> I don't think you do. I think you want to run. He's not in the mood for onion rings. Yeah, he's there. We go. Ooh yeah. Oh, so that's actually is. a girl. Okay. Barely any bristle. None going up in the. In the, uh, it's a much, much, uh, by the way, it's a much older female. Okay. Come on out. So max size we're looking at. Yeah, that's know, probably five, a max size inches. female. Yeah, maybe six inches on a male. Long fins are much longer, but. So this is, I mean, this is a really good fish for somebody. You know, the traditional, you know, people get the, the pleco that grows to a foot long. You know, right. they get this that, is, at, they get it at Petco. Why, yeah, they sell so well is because this is what everyone should own. They're good cleaners and they don't get too ridiculously big. You can shoehorn them and maybe down to a 20, a 20 long for sure. Yeah. You know, a 20 long would only be like this tank, but this long instead, six inches shorter and a little bit six inches shorter front to back. Right. But you can see here I've got a lot and they colony breed and they're really sustaining themselves well. And uh, there's just no aggression really between adults and babies and... Um, so yeah, you, what you want to breed them, now that we finally it's not sucking on me anymore. <laughs> so you a, want like a cave. A good fish to, to pick to breed. Yeah. I mean. You want a cave where they can block the hole. So I've got this cave right here. Oh, there's even one inside. I hope I'm not disrupting eggs. Let's see. There's a male in there, so there could be eggs. So the males always sit on the eggs, by the way. The female goes in, lays the eggs, and then the male uh, guards them and fans them. So he fans them and keeps any fungus from happening. Let me keep looking in here. I don't see any eggs, but yeah, I'm looking. Which we can link to my video, by the way. I did a video on how to breed, and there's you can see eggs. And uh, but yeah, there's no eggs currently right now. But you can see them in there, and he, he really what he wants is a female to come in, lay some eggs. He'll guard them and fan them, and uh, do their thing. But he's in there. That male's there. They're getting along, and there's a lot of cover in here to, mm -hmm. to split up the line of sight, but. Uh, really, it only takes about seven to ten days for the eggs to hatch out. Then they just eat algae and anything else the parents would. So, algae wafers, green beans, almost anything really. In fact, some of the breeders, uh, they use a lot of flake food to actually raise them. And uh, nothing special, but I like to use your passion food and frozen food. So. so, if I wanted to breed these fish at yeah. home... How many? How many should I get? What what size of fish should I be looking to get? What what, what would be so, the good? I, I have an idea of what tank size. Yeah. The kind of you know what I need in the tank, but as far as the livestock goes, what what should I do to so give if they're myself big the enough to shot? sex? Get just a, a boy and a girl, but let's okay. say they were down like at this size, that you can't know if that's a boy or a girl yet. It has to reach sexual maturity. So mm -hmm. like these, you might pick up four or six of them, grow them out because it takes a long time. So to like to get from that to 
this big guy is probably two or three years. They'll wow. start breeding in about a year, year and two or three months. Uh, but you don't want to wait a whole year and then go, dang it, I got three boys or three girls or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. you can always buy a group. <clears throat> and they're not too expensive. You know, like at, at this size at my store, I mean, a little bit bigger maybe, whatever. It's like nine ninety nine. Those small guys would be four ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you might go, oh, I'm going to spend 60 bucks, But you should, if they have a batch of 70 babies and you sell off the fry at a dollar a piece, you've paid for all you bought. Exactly. And then if you raise these and let's say you get them to that big, you go to sell them off because you've got a pair and you made two pairs. Well, you might be able to sell a pair off for like in the store, we'll sell them at 50 bucks for people that want to breed them. Well, yeah. And usually they're already sitting on <laughs> eggs and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I would say either a pair that you can sex or a group of six and then grow them out. So hopefully you're not wasting too much time. And meanwhile, get other products going on. Like I got shrimp and guppies. Those will breed much before these guys. And then one day you'll see babies and you will be stoked. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, one last question, how many per per batch what do you think how many how many eggs and then how many are gonna you know be viable from yeah that, so from for that me batch? i think it's more between like 60 and 100 okay and if i was to remove the eggs and hatch them in their own tank where they don't have to compete with all these other fish and shrimp and stuff like that i would probably keep you know if it's 100 95 would probably make it wow that's but in here you can crazy. see like well you're saying they're gonna have 100 a batch and like i only see a few babies this size right here mm -hmm. well that's because they probably are starving out or getting eaten by guppies. Guppies will actually eat baby bristlenose and stuff. I've seen it happen. Wow. And uh, so there's always predators. But what, at the same time, what am I going to do? Because they lay eggs. I've had them go every week. Like if you have 100 new bristlenose coming into your, your life every week, you've got a problem and a lot of maintenance on your hands. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you don't always want all of that either. Those are you're kind of making them grow on me, man. Like yeah, that's cool, right? Those are yeah. pretty cool. So you guys heard it from the bristlenose master himself, Corey. Uh, all you need to know about how to breed them, and who knows, maybe if I decide to get over my weird phobia of blecos, uh, maybe I'll start breeding some bristlenose. Sounds like it could be a good option. And it sounds fun, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. It it's, is. A, it's a fun time. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to go subscribe to Aquarium Co-op if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, links in the description to his video that is probably a little bit more in detail on Bristlenose Pleco breeding. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.